some of the work that I have done in the last two years and uh, one of my recent projects. But still, I'm going to give you some uh, general, general overview. I'm still going to give you some, uh, some brief overview about the retrieval technique. And I'm going to show you um, the flow, the, the usual flow of the retrievals. So today we have two approaches in atmospheric modeling. One is called forward, our direct modeling technique, which is called actually theory driven because we use all of our knowledge of our physical and chemical processes and in, we engage them to produce the observable spectra. Uh, what it's usually done when we use four models is that we use uh, some assumptions of these processes and a grid of models, and then we tweak certain parameters until we find the best match with the data. Uh, this comparison is unfortunately done by eye, so it's not as accurate. Uh, another approach is called inverse or retrieval approach that actually determines the properties of the planetary atmosphere based on the available observation. And this approach actually uses statistical algorithm, usually Marco Chain Monte Carlo routine, to explore the phase space of the parameters until it finds the best match with the data. Um, the goal of this approach is to estimate the model parameters and their certainties, and we call it retrieval because we are retrieving the temperature and pressure profiles and abundances. Now, both of those approaches have their limitations and advantages. And the advantages of forward model is that they actually give us a physical insight into the planetary atmosphere be because we engage all those physical and uh, chemical knowledge that we have. It is also usually called self-consistent. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, ad disadvantages or limitations of this model is that all the physics that is put in these models and all the chemistry that is put in these models are put without any uncertainty. And the manual tweaking of the parameters actually prevents us to put some statistically robust treatment of our, to, 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 to provide some statistically robust treatment of certainties. And even if we get the final solution, we never know whether it's the only plausible one. On the other hand, uh, inverse approach do not model any chemical or physical process in the planetary atmosphere, so actually it doesn't give us a lot of physical insight. Even worse, it can't usually rule out some of the unphysical solutions, and there is a no consistency check between the TB profile and the abundances or the composition of the planet. It is also strongly dependent on the quality of the data that we have available. However, this Bayesian-based algorithm thoroughly explores the phase space of our parameters and puts a robust estimates on our uncertainties by not uh, defining a best fit model rather than the confidence region. And what we get with the posterior distribution, with exploring the posterior distribution of our parameters, is which parameters are actually correlated and whether the data are sufficient to give us any constraints on our parameters. What also this approach gives us, give us is that it can uh, allow us to even address some unknown processes that are, that are not yet addressed in the theory. So to be able to explain to you how this actually works, I'm, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to talk about the, the, the retrieval frameworks that I developed with some of my collaborators. And I already mentioned Bayesian Atmospheric Radiative Transfer Code last time that I had the presentation. And this is a retrieval framework, open source, that is out there. So anybody can use it. And it's out there for the last year. It's, uh, it has a full documentation. This retrieval framework actually has a, a uh, forward model inside that is written in very complex structure-oriented C language, which is very unfriendly. So recently, there is a new addition to this code, which is um, actually written mostly in Python and somewhat in C, which is called Pirate Bay. So both of these retrieval frameworks actually perform the retrieval in the same way. Uh, they have three self-sufficient modules. One is 
all of these modules are also open source codes and you can find them online. The first is thermochemical equilibrium of analysis code. The second is multi-core Markov chain Monte Carlo routine, which is differential evolution Markov chain routine. And the third one is the radiative transfer model, which is the 1, 1D line by line radiative transfer module that actually generates the models of the planetary atmosphere based on the eclipse or transit geometry. So just to try to explain you how retrieval actually works, I put this flow chart and I'm, I, I'm guessing that most of the retrievals out there actually work in a similar, similar manner. So um, what we actually start with is we start with some initial, initial guess. Um, first, let me just explain to you um, in purple, those are three ma major modules in, in, in our retrieval framework. These yellow um, squares are, are supporting modules. In green and white are inputs and outputs. And in red are the final outputs of the retrieval framework. So we start, we initialize, we initialize the, uh, the atmospheric modeling either by performing thermochemical equilibrium calculations or um, just putting a uniform vertical PT profile, a uniform uh, abundance profile. And for that, we use one of the two parameterized TP profile approaches, which we internally call line or Madu's approaches because they are heavily used by line. Um, then uh, with an initial guess, we, uh, we pass that to the atmospheric generator who actually generates the model of the atmosphere. Then we pass it to the radiative transfer module, which calculates the spectra. Then that spectra is actually integrated along the band passes of our observation. Those integrated points we send to the Markov chain Monte Carlo routine, which actually compares the points with the data points that we already have and calculates chi-square. Uh, we repeat this and uh, actually explore the parameter space of all of our parameters, usually 10,000 iterations until the Gelman and Rubin convergence test is satisfied. And finally, we have our best fit model. Um, the final outputs of, of this code are the best fit spectrum, the MCMC PT profile plot, and the contribution functions. As I said, this code and the Pirate Bay codes are open source codes, and they have heavy documentation, so everybody can use it. Um, this code is also applied to many planets, and many papers are now in the preparation. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the results with this code a little later. First, I want to just briefly talk about the TEA, because I have one project for students which involves TEA. So there are also two approaches how one can calculate thermochemical equilibrium. Uh, thermochemical equilibrium. One, uh, first is to engage the equilibrium constants and reaction rates, which is called kinetics. And the other is to minimize the free energy of the system. Now, even though the kinetics approach is considered to be really comprehensive because it starts from the deep of the planetary atmosphere when we have a, when, when they, it can calculate the thermochemical equilibrium uh, and then it goes up with a, in, and includes the vertical mixing and quetching and photochemistry. There are some, uh, there are some drawbacks, I don't know how to say that, uh, with this approach because with high temperature, in high temperature, um, the reverse and forward reaction rates are not well known and contradictory in the literature. And it is not really well established what are those uh, equations that need to be used so this approach can be compared to other, to other kinetic codes. On the other hand, the uh, Gibbs free energy minimization uh, technique uh, treats each of the species independently, um, uh, actually solving only a limited set of equations, and it's really fast. And what is important that the inputs for this Gibbs free energy minimization are only thermodynamic data, which are usually used from uh, Janov. And they are easily interpolated or extrapolated. Um, so term chemical equilibrium calculations are actually needed for modeling any planetary in atmosphere, even if you want to do uh, photochemistry, if you want to do forward or retrieval methods. Uh, and term chemical equilibrium calculations can be used as a first order approximation for a variety of atmospheres. So this is TEA. This is the layout of the TEA code. And as I said, it uses Gibbs free energy minimization um, by uh, following white at all. It uses Janov tables. And it's an open source code written in Python. It runs on Linux and Mac. 
And it's out there for the last two years, and many groups around the world are already using it. And uh, it is very stable. There are no known no, no bugs in, in the TEA. So um, the code is heavily tested against the other codes out there. But I wanted to point out one of the tests because I find it important. And one of the tests is done with a CA code, which is heavily used in the exoplanetary community. Uh, this code CA is, co is actually chemical equilibrium with applications written 50 years ago in Fortran. And um, what I did here is just use uh, um, the most spectroscopically active species in hot Jupiters and run TEA and CEA in parallel. And maybe you cannot see it on the upper plots, but on the, on the, top, on the bottom plots you can actually see that if you just run TEA and CEA, there is some difference in the abundances for CH4 and HCN. And those difference, the differences are mostly come on the higher, higher temperatures. Um, so what I did is just to convince myself that the minimization technique that works in TEA is correct, I used CEA database, and I put them in TEA, and I ran them, and I produced the, the exact match. So the reason why this happens is because, as I said, CA is written 50 years ago, and it actually has the obsolete database inside. So we have to be a little careful if we want uh, really precise abundances, which databases are we going to use. Um, recently, Hank actually used TEA to test his new analytical approach that he developed. He actually developed a set of equations to calculate chemical equilibrium. And as you can see here, a perfect match is, uh, is produced with TEA. Um, as I said, really? Oh, OK. I'm going to skip this. So, um, or I'm going to really speed up. Can I have a little bit more? <laughs> so I'm sorry, I, I was too slow. Um, so this is uh, the example how C2O ratio is, is really significant in the exoplanetary atmospheres because when you have a C2O ratio on, or uh, solar uh, or C2O ratio 1.2, the abundances of certain species are highly influenced. The underlying chemistry are really changing. So uh, in the C2O ratio equals 0 0.5 solar, Water is the most abundant, but when we go to higher c ratios, um, uh, hydrocarbons become really important. So this is one of my projects. TA currently works with gaseous species, but uh, I want to implement clouds. Uh, I want to implement solids and condensates in ionized species so we can apply TEA when we want to have a realistic atmosphere for clouds and photochemistry. I also want to try to improve Janus tables, which are last updated in 2010, because they are missing some uh, important hydrocarbons. So this is the result of the atmospheric analysis of was 43 b I used 26 data points, Hytron databases. These are the secondary eclipses data points. What I wanted to do is to test several cases, several different cases, because people in the retrieval are using uh, different approach how many molecules or how many opacity sources are actually uh, put in the retrievals, and that can produce different results. I tried the four molecules, seven molecules. These, these molecules are actually important when we have C2O ratio larger than one, and these when we have thermal inversion. I use statistical criteria to assess uh, the best fit. I'm showing you here only the, the, the case when I have four, four species. Um, what you can see here is the, um, uh, the best fit model. In red are the data points. In black are the integrated um, points. And here you can see the HST, HST part of the best fit model. This is the, the best TP profile. Here I actually compare when I put 7 or 11 opacity sources and not, uh, they are just marginally different. Um, so, uh, what I also did here, trying to figure out which of the species has the most influence on the final best fit model, I actually um, run a forward model using the best TP and the abundances with only one opacity, 
which is water, CO, CH4, and CO2. You, what you can see here, that the most influence on ours packet comes from water, which you can also see here in the posterior histograms. And I also tried different CTO ratios, concluded that uh, the difference between uh, different CTO ratios here is only marginal, so we cannot actually conclude much about that. So um, TP profile is consistent with the previous work, no thermal inversion, and we constrain water to 1 to 10 solar. So the second project I had is actually related to BART and uh, Pirate Bay, and I want to implement clouds in, in these retrievals because clouds are tend to be very important in the, in the overall or atmospheric modeling. So they influence, as I said, uh, transport of radiation, atmospheric chemistry, planetary temperature, habitability, and they even influence the detectability of the planet because they remove the absorbers from the observable atmosphere producing a flat spectrum and a lot of scattering. So what I wanted to do is to implement different parameterization methods, um, starting for, from the very basic ones to the more complicated ones, and trying to figure out which of these approaches will give us the most with the current data that we have, and which of these approaches will give us the most with the future JWST data. What I also wanted to do is to do some to use some phase curves because phase curves are giving us the most comprehensive information. What I wanted to do is to uh, use the phase curve ob observations, engaging each of the phases independently, or doing a joint fit where we simultaneously retrieve all of the phases. Just for a very end, I'm going to take one or two minutes. I just wanted to give you some preliminary results on some project that I'm doing with Ian. What we were trying to figure out here is the limitations of the 1D retrieval. Uh, so in 1D retrieval, we assume that, planet, that, that, uh, that the planet is, is spherically symmetric. But what we actually know from the hydrodynamics code, that the planet is not spherically symmetric and that the TP profiles are different even on one hemisphere, not including the, 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 the other. So what we did, we, put the, we used the output of the radiative hydrodynamic code from Ian and we used it as, the, as an observable planet. And we tried to validate the, the output that will come from the retrieval and see whether each of these profiles, actually, these are the questions that we wanted to ask uh, the answer. Does the recovered TP profile actually exist anywhere on the planet? Or is it a weighted average of the actual profiles that has no bearing on the planet? So what we actually did, we, uh, we had a simulation of HD 189733, and we extracted TP profiles on every 10 longitude latitude. Then I put that in the TEA, produced the chemical abundances. Then I, with some opacity sources, I ran it through the radiative transfer uh, module and produced uh, planetary spectrum or produced uh, intensities. Then I integrated these intensities along the, the day side of the planet and produced this spectrum. This spectrum is actually something for which, which we do not know what is the underlying temperature and pressure structure. And what we, want, what we did with this, with, with this high resolution spectrum, we actually uh, put it through the observational tools from Thomas Green and uh, bin these high resolution spectra based on the JWST, HST, and Spitzer data. And these are what I'm going to show you here are just preliminary results. These are not converged models. So what I am plotting here is all of the TP profiles that come from Ian's code with uh, non-converged models for WST, HST, and Spitzer, and for HST and Spitzer only. What you can see here is that with JWST data, we could catch some kind of thermal inversion here, but with HST and Spitzer data, we don't even see inversion. So we are going to explore this more. This is just a recent project. We want to do a different kind of averages of this TP profile and see which of the TP profile actually corresponds to the retrieved TP profile. Thank you. what kind of constraints on the mixing ratios. So what we do 
is we put a prior um, with some reasonable values, like usually nine magnitudes, and we get some value with the one sigma uncertainties. Yes. Sorry? What are the values of one, one sigma? 10 to the minus 4 for, I don't know, CO2. Um, you're asking me how, uh, what are the uncertainties, the values of the uncertainties. Yeah, I have to take a look at that. Yes? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's a very good question that actually Kevin Hang asked me. It is sampling, but we are sampling with very high resolution. Uh, it's uh, one centimeter minus one, which gives us, um, I actually have that in here. I can show you afterwards. Yeah. Uh, no, just the extinction coefficient calculation and the broadening is in C. Everything else is in Python. Because those are the slowest ones to calculate. All right, thanks everyone for a great day. Uh, thank you, Mina, again.